Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of Investing for the Common Man, the channel where we learn how to save not only our money, but also our time with short, concise, instructional videos. Today, we are going to learn what the terms bid and ask mean when you see them on your trading platform and how to avoid losing money to slippage. We will also introduce the basic concepts of volume and volatility. Before we get started, please take two seconds out of your day to support my channel by subscribing and hitting that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's dive in. When you go to buy or sell a stock, you will notice that rather than one price, you will actually see two different prices labeled bid and ask. The bid will always be the lower of the two and represents the highest price at which traders are currently willing to buy the stock. The ask on the other hand will always be higher than the bid and is the lowest price at which traders are currently willing to sell the stock. These bid and ask prices represent currently open limit orders in the market. If you are a bit fuzzy on the different types of orders and how they work, just pause this video for a minute and go check out my other video that I made a few weeks ago on the five different order types. Anyways, back to the bid and the ask. Whenever you place a market order, your order is filled immediately at the best available price. This means that if you are purchasing stock, your order will be filled at the ask, the higher of the two prices, because sellers are trying to maximize their profits. If you place a market order to sell, then your order will be filled at the bid, the lower of the two prices. You can probably already see how this works against you as a trader. On your trading platform, you might also see a price labeled last. This is the last price at which a transaction occurred for a stock and is the data point used to create charts of a stock's price movement over a period of time. Many people will refer to this last price as the current price but just because a transaction occurred at that price a few minutes or a few seconds ago does not necessarily mean that another transaction will. To understand this, it helps me to think about haggling at a farmer's market. The shopkeeper might ask you to pay $20 for a bushel of turnips. This is the ask, but you may make a counter offer or a bid of $10. The shopkeeper is unlikely to accept your lowball bid, but might reduce his asking price by a few dollars. The two of you may go back and forth a few times before you agree on the price of $15 and the transaction occurs. In the stock market, this same negotiation occurs thousands of times per minute, not with one buyer and seller, but with millions of buyers and sellers all at the same time. This may sound insane and chaotic, but thanks to computers, more than 6 billion shares of stock are traded each day in an orderly fashion. To understand how this works a little, let's go back to our farmer's market example. You've negotiated the shopkeeper's ask down to $18, but you still want a better price, so you place a bid of $15. It is entirely possible that another buyer may consider the $18 ask a fair deal and step in and buy the seller's entire inventory. At this point, the last transaction data point would be $18, but with all of the sellers willing to sell at 18 exhausted, the ask price might return to 20 or even increase as long as there are still buyers continuing to create demand, and you may miss out on your opportunity to purchase at a discount. This example illustrates that rather than a traditional price negotiation between one buyer and one seller, the stock market facilitates price negotiations between millions of buyers and sellers simultaneously. The bid and the ask give us insight into these price negotiations and can give us an idea of how our orders are likely to be filled. Whenever you are preparing to place a trade, it is important to look at how far apart the bid and the ask are from one another. This difference is referred to as the bid-ask spread. In an ideal situation, the bid and the ask will be very close together. In the case of heavily traded, highly liquid stocks and exchange traded funds, the bid-ask spread is often only one or two pennies wide. This means that there are many buyers and sellers that generally agree on the current fair price of a stock which makes filling market orders at fair prices very easy. But sometimes the bid-ask spread can be very far apart, which makes filling an order much more difficult and can cause traders to lose money to slippage. The broad definition of slippage is any time a trade is executed at a different price than the intended execution price. When we are talking about the bid-ask spread, slippage is the difference between the bid and the ask. 
If we go back to our turnip example, if the current ask is $18 and the bid is $15 and you place a market order to buy, your order will be filled at the ask of $18 per bushel. If you then turn around and want to sell those turnips immediately with another market order, your sell order will be filled at the bid, which is currently $15. Even though nothing in the market has changed, you will still lose $3 to slippage. Wide bid ask spreads are a symptom of a shortage of liquidity and are usually caused by two things, low volume and or high volatility. Trading volume is the number of shares that are traded in a given time period. Heavily traded ETFs like SPY can trade around 65 million shares per day on average, as opposed to lesser known company stocks that might trade less than 1 million shares per day. Volatility is a measurement of the degree of variation of an asset's price over time. If a stock price is trading erratically due to breaking news or some sort of turmoil in the marketplace, there may be less of a consensus from the market of what that stock is currently worth. This volatility in price action can cause the bid-ask spread to become wider. To avoid losing money to slippage, you can either submit limit orders somewhere in between the bid and the ask to try to secure a better price, or you can focus on trading equities with high levels of liquidity and tight bid-ask spreads. As a general rule of thumb, usually you should avoid actively trading any stocks that trade less than 1 million shares per day. If you are trading with large quantities of money, you may want to set your volume threshold even higher to seek markets with the maximum liquidity. The reason that large accounts require higher levels of liquidity is because there is another number in the bid-ask chain labeled size. The size expresses the number of shares available at that bid or ask price. So if you sell 10,000 shares using a market order, but there are only 1,000 shares available at the highest bid price of 15, the other 9,000 shares will be sold at lower prices. So in this example, your average transaction price would be around $14.30, which means you would have lost an unexpected $7,000 on this trade. This is another type of slippage. In this situation, your best defense would be to break your large transaction into smaller pieces and use limit orders whenever you can. Slippage can also be a large concern when trading in the options market. Out-of-the-money options and options with long-term expirations tend to trade at very low volumes, so the bid-ask prices can be quite wide. As leverage derivatives, option prices also tend to fluctuate with more volatility, which further increases the risk of slippage. I know that I haven't covered options yet on this channel, but I'm working on a new video that will break down the basics of what options are, how they work, and why you might want to use them. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss that video. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, keep calm, stay healthy, and happy trading.